Hello, and thank you so much for your time. My name is Alana Church. I'm a molecular and pediatric pathologist at Boston Children's Hospital, the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, and Harvard Medical School. I'm honored to speak to you today on behalf of the Association for Molecular Pathology on an important core concept, fusion detection by next-generation sequencing using RNA. First, let's review what we mean by gene fusion. A gene fusion when happens when a part of one gene, represented here by the fish, connects to a different gene, often from a completely different part of the genome, represented here by the lion. DNA breaks happen in each gene, and they combine to create a hybrid or chimeric gene. The hybrid DNA translates to hybrid RNA, which becomes a hybrid protein. As you know, genetic drivers of cancer generally come in two flavors, oncogenes and tumor suppressors. Oncogenes insert their effects by gain of function alterations, with a classic example being the BRAF gene, which can be altered with a sequence variant like BRAF V600E, or with fusion like the KIAA1549 BRAF fusion. Those gain of function alterations are associated with an increase in RNA expression. Tumor suppressors like TP53 can also become drivers due to a genetic DNA fusion, but these fusions will result in loss of function and are associated with decreased RNA expression, which means that we are not going to try to use RNA to identify those fusions. Oncogenic gain of function fusions in cancer usually look a bit like this fish lion. The left partner, the fish, acts as the on switch or driver of expression of the fusion, while the right partner, the lion, acts as the business end of this fusion. Typical examples of this confirmation include the kinase gene fusions that we've seen many times, including ALK, RET, ROS1, and the NTRAC genes. Here's another representation of that hybrid gene in both DNA and RNA. One of the important differences that you'll notice here is that when we're looking at the DNA, the breakpoint happens in the middle of a long intronic sequence. And these breakpoints are typically highly variable, such that each patient's specific breakpoint is effectively unique. In contrast, when we look at the RNA sequence, we've eliminated that long intron, and we just have those two exons joining together directly. Because of the way these hybrid genes need to come together to preserve their functional domains, many different patients will have the same RNA fusions. This distinction between DNA and RNA fusions becomes particularly important when we're thinking about how to design our molecular assays. If we want to find that one position where the two genes connect in the DNA, we have to target that whole long intron. If instead we use RNA as our substrate, we can focus our primers just around the ends of those exons, which is much more efficient. There are a couple of different ways that we can assemble our RNA fusion detection libraries. The first is to simply design primers for both of the genes in the fusion around the known breakpoints. So to detect an ETV6 and track three fusion, for example, we will create a primer for ETV6 and for NTRAC3. This plan will work very well for detecting ETV6 and TRAC3 fusions, but would give a negative result for an alternate fusion like EML4 and TRAC3. It's important to remember that for kinase genes like NTRAC, there are typically a wide variety of left gene partners. Another technique for assembly of RNA fusion detection libraries uses a technique developed by my colleagues at Massachusetts General Hospital, which is an anchored or hemi-nested approach. In this case, we're priming off of one gene, let's say NTRAC3 on the right using our prior example. And on the left side, we're going to prime off of the adapter that was added on during library preparation. This technique will allow us to detect the classic ETV6 NTRAC3 fusion and any of the many alternate fusions like EML4 and TREC3, as long as the breakpoint is targeted. To review the key points, oncogenic gain of function fusions are highly expressed in RNA. RNA is an effective substrate for fusion detection by PCR or by NGS. Library preparation for NGS panels using RNA is efficient due to the lack of introns. Libraries can use two gene anchors as primers 
or a single fusion partner as the primer. Thank you. For an advanced topic, please see the other recording by my colleague, Dr. Valentina Nardi, on how to interpret gene fusions.